They're as much a part of summer as watermelons and sunburns. Mosquitoes are found in every state, on every continent except Antarctica. And if this year is anything like last year, they're a real problem. Consider this. In 2011, there were just over 700 reported cases of West Nile virus. But in 2012, thanks in part to a warmer than normal winter, the number of West Nile cases jumped to well over 5,000. Mosquitoes are the most dangerous. The most Leslie Vosshall runs Rockefeller University's Laboratory of Neurogenetics and Behavior in New York City. Here, they're working hard to find out exactly how and why mosquitoes hunt for humans. I love mosquitoes. I have completely fallen in love with the mosquito. They're beautiful creatures. They have beautiful behaviors, but they're dangerous. And yet most people, if you said mosquitoes are beautiful, would tell you you're crazy. Exactly. Do people I get that a lot. tell you you're crazy? I get that a lot. She's really not crazy. How many mosquitoes are in here? A lot. A lot. Hundreds of thousands. But her dedication to her work seems jaw-droppingly insane, especially around feeding time. So these are um, hungry girls and some boys, and so I'm going to try to prevent them from escaping. And... Vosshall needs healthy mosquitoes for her research. It takes a, about a minute and a half. And this, she says, helps keep them that way. Only female mosquitoes bite, and only then because they need the blood to make eggs. Just so you know, she does this even when there aren't any cameras around. Look at your arm. Oh, 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 oh. Look at your arm. I feel good. You feel good. I feel good. Despite the way I've done my looks. job. <laughs> the welts are the body's reaction to the saliva mosquitoes inject to make your blood flow. Over time, Vosshall's body has become accustomed to this routine. Still, there's nothing routine about her work. What's interesting is that the really dangerous disease causing mosquitoes have acquired a taste for humans. So Anopheles gambi, which spreads malaria, the principal vector of malaria, prefers humans over all other animals. Besides Anopheles, some other mosquitoes high on the human misery list are the dengue fever carrier Aedes aegypti, that in this country is found mostly in the southeast, and Culex pipiens, a carrier of West Nile virus that can be found coast to coast. And we'll lock those on either side. They too have a taste for us, and some of us are mosquito magnets. We measure how many are trying to bite the person after five minutes. Researcher Lindsay Bellani turns mosquitoes loose on volunteers' bare arms. And we're off. The mosquitoes really like the way this guy smelled. Look how they're trying to push through the little screen. Scientists have yet to pinpoint what drives them wild, but there's evidence that people with higher levels of sugar in their blood can be more appetizing to a hungry mosquito who can typically smell dinner 50 yards away. They're not working off of very much, but they do it so, so well. And in some way, I developed like a weird kind of respect for the mosquitoes. <laughs> the Centers for Disease Control have respect for mosquitoes, too. The agency was created in 1946 to fight malaria. And while malaria has been all but wiped out in the United States, there are plenty of other mosquito-borne diseases to worry about. Kimberly King never gave mosquitoes a second thought until her five-year-old daughter Adriana was bitten by a mosquito carrying the rare Eastern Equin Encephalitis virus, or Triple E, somewhere near their home south of Boston. We could have been swimming, we could have been hiking in the woods, we could have been fishing, um, we could have been sitting on the back porch, um, we could have been driving in the car. And then what happened? She came to you and said, Mom, I don't feel well? It was, I don't feel good. Um, she seemed to have flu-like symptoms. Um, and then within 24 hours of her first symptom, she was seizing. They went to the hospital, and after a week in intensive care, it was clear that the little girl would not recover. We had to make the decision to take her off of life support. Um, and we took her off of life support. She was, she was in my arms. I was holding her as she died. They took her off all of her machines and her hoses in my arms. And they allowed me to help wash her up before they sent her down to the morgue. Kim King buried her daughter on the day she would have started kindergarten. Where are you off to, buddy? She's become a full-time advocate for mosquito repellent and control. Do you feel in a way like you're the unlucky one in a million? No. No? 
there was there were others before me and unfortunately there'll be others after me I just wish that before she had passed away there was somebody like me trying to help educate the public Still, death by mosquito is relatively rare in the United States. Last year, around 300 people here died of mosquito-borne disease. Those numbers would be higher, experts say, if not for aggressive mosquito control. Our only chance of controlling these mosquitoes is to get them when they're down here. Shelley Redivan helps run the Lee County, Florida Mosquito Control District, the largest in Florida, she says, and maybe the country. We monitor routinely for St. Louis encephalitis, uh, West Nile virus, we're starting to monitor for dengue, and also triple E, the Eastern Equine Encephalitis. Her arsenal includes around a dozen aircraft that cover the 1,200 square mile county, spraying for mosquito larvae that breed wherever they're standing water, which down here can be pretty much anywhere. And in Florida, where the bugs naturally thrive, it's about more than public health. It used to be about two months out of the year, tourists would come to Florida because that was the only time they didn't have that many mosquitoes. But we have since been able to control them, and if we do that, we can have a 12-month out of the year tourist season. So it means big bucks if you control mosquitoes. It's major for Florida since tourism is such a big financial part of our, of our state. I think some people might ask, if you can't reach it by the ground, is it really a concern? Aren't those mosquitoes out there in the wild somewhere? Well, ideally, it, it would be nice if the mosquitoes would stay where they hatch off, but they don't. And particularly, the salt marsh mosquito is a very strong flyer. They can fly easily 25 miles a day. 25 miles 25 a day? 25 miles a day. So the agency covers a wide area. To those who worry about environmental impact, Redivan says the insecticide is only toxic to mosquitoes and its effect only temporary. After every high tide and rainfall and after every spray run, an agent checks ponds and puddles to see how many mosquito larvae or wigglers have started life anew. With swarms able to regenerate in a matter of weeks, and with an average of two new mosquito-transmitted diseases found here every year, the threat of the next epidemic is never far over the horizon. Could we ever really wipe them out? We haven't been successful so far, right? It's been, you know, in the 1950s, we came up with um, insecticides that, that knocked the populations down a lot, but then the problem is you'll always have a few mosquitoes that uh, develop resistance. It's an arms race. We have to constantly come up with new insecticides to try to knock down the populations. It's an arms race. It is an arms race. So who's ahead? <laughs> mosquitoes are ahead, unfortunately. The mosquitoes are winning. Mosquitoes are winning.